Um, so what makes Washington, D.C. such a great city for a photographer? I've obviously had a lot of time to think about this because I started shooting Washington before 1985 because my first book on Washington mm -hmm. came out then and here it is 25 years later and we're going to have the third revised edition of that early uh, book. And, and there's really two things working. One is Washington is the most photogenic city in America and I say that not out of local pride but mm -hmm. because I have been to every city in America working on my two books on America and it is the most photogenic place because it has extraordinary architecture, extraordinary sculpture, beautiful parks, uh, beautiful river and canal running into it, a variety of neighborhoods. So it's, it's an unusually uh, photogenic city and to enhance that because of the height limitation, unlike say New York and Chicago and really other, other cities with tall buildings, it's much more visually accessible. You're not finding yourself pointing up all the time. You can get back on the mall or wherever and see things directly. So that's one aspect that makes it a great city to photograph. You, if you have good material, it makes mm -hmm. it a lot easier for the photographer. But the other thing is, is both the wonder and the challenge of photographing Washington. It is, I am confident in saying, the most photographed city in the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there might be some competition with Paris. Paris. Uh, yeah. But really, this is a city whose icons are photographed over and over. So the challenge that I uh, really love is to find a new way of looking at those familiar things. You know, there are books that come out about Washington, it seems like every year or two. And so my challenge uh, that, that I take as a personal challenge, but it also I think pleases publishers, is to, find, to have a new take on it. Mm -hmm. And so when people look at my pictures, I hope their reaction is, you know, I've seen the Capitol, the Lincoln Memorial, Jefferson, whatever, in some of these neighborhoods, but I never quite saw it from that perspective. Right. So I try to, you know, just come at it from a little bit different angle, with a little bit different light, a little bit different uh, uh, focus, and, um, and so it's a great challenge and a great opportunity. Now, this is the third uh, yes. revision of this book. What, what's different about this book than the first book or the second revision? when they came up with the concept of director's cut, which you didn't hear 10 years ago, but now all of a sudden it's a big thing, I knew exactly what they meant. When, whenever a, a person in a creative field does a piece of work, and I suppose this is true in other fields too, but maybe sometimes the creatives feel it more intensely, you always have that feeling you want to go back and fix it. You know, <laughs> there's some pictures that aren't as strong as you wanted. I also write the text to my books and well, maybe that story wasn't quite so interesting and I designed the books and there were a lot of little design decisions you make that after you live with them for a while you think, oh, you know, I could have done a little better on that one. So there's a chance to upgrade the book to, uh, you know, have better pictures, more interesting stories, etc. And then of course Washington, like any other city, is always growing. So. You know, the, the prior edition of the book was in 2003. Well, since then, we've had the Museum of the American Indian. Uh, we've had the World War II Memorial installed. These are, you know, pretty imposing, significant mm -hmm. places, so I wanted to uh, add those. And I even, on the, the only negative side in, in the development between the first book and 25 years later, is there's just more traffic in this town. So I uh -huh. had to put a picture of traffic in because that's part of the town. But in fact, everything else in the city, and I'm sure everyone has their own complaints, but I've been to a lot of cities and this really is beautifully maintained uh, and a fascinating city and stuff to photograph or look at everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Now, did you start out uh, w with this book thinking that uh, I'm going to lay it out just the way that it is here? You've laid it out uh, in uh, categories, the mall and monuments, the federal city, sculpture and memorials, nature and parks on the move around the town, or did you just collect photos and then go back and kind of say, oh, I've got some groupings here? You, I think part of it is that. Part of it is I looked at other books. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you, when you apply uh, uh, f uh, to a publisher to publish your book, when, you know, when you send, send your work in, they want to know what else is out there that's in that marketplace. So I, like any other, uh, you know, photographer, I would go and look at the books and all of the focus was on just the monuments and memorials, almost entirely. And so 
And I had lived in the city for many years, and I saw it as that, but also as neighborhoods, as parks, as other things going on. So I really wanted to capture Washington as a complete, uh, really as a complete city. And, and then I don't, uh, I kind of like the categories. It's like we can't stay focused on one subject too long. So I found that the, the photographs kind of broke into, into categories. Another thing that, um, that happened as I was putting the book together is I, I conjured up all the memories I had of the city, not simply as a photographer looking at beautiful things, but I had experiences as a lawyer and a corporate guy in these places. So, you know, I had the, uh, the good fortune to sit at council's table in the Supreme Court, so I talked, you know, in the text about that. I played on the White House tennis court that nobody knows it quite <laughs> exists somewhere over in the holly right. trees. You know, I, I had a chance to testify before Congress and so on. So I'm able to tell some of these stories that relate to these things, but I'm seeing them not just as a photographer, but as somebody who sees these buildings not as government monuments so much, mm -hmm. but as places that live and breathe and work and frustrate and, you know, exalt and right. all of that. Right. So that made it a special pleasure to, to do the book. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the first sec, uh, section, the Mall and Monuments. Now here's a beautiful aerial shot. Tell me about this picture. How'd you get it, first of all? Well, yeah, when people see that picture now, they always want to know, how did I get permission? Because post 9-11, a lot of the rules changed. We, you know, the nation very strongly reacted, and the Capitol, for obvious reasons, reacted with a lot tighter security. So my aerial photos are pre-9-11. So if you were to, you know, get your microscope out, you would notice there's no American Indian Museum in that mm -hmm. photograph mm -hmm. because that was taken some years ago. But the overall uh, view, I start the book out with that as kind of in, like a, in a movie, an establishment shot. So you get a sense of where things are. But there's nothing like being up in a helicopter over the Lincoln Memorial with the city in front of you. It's really a breathtaking uh, vista. And of course, knowing all the buildings and the neighborhoods just uh, mm -hmm. it makes it a thrill. So I do, I've done a lot of aerial work in my life, and, and being above Washington or going above Arlington Cemetery, uh, places like that are, are really wonderful. Now, uh, this one here, we talked about a little bit uh, earlier, because I wanted to share this one with the audience, the East Building of the National Gallery of Art. I wouldn't know <laughs> that that's right. what this is, because it's a piece of art. Some of the pictures Within are itself. a little bit on the abstract side, and this is kind of a geometric abstract, but those people who've been to the National Gallery are never surprised when they see the caption. It's like, oh yeah, but then they're kind of <laughs> twisting their head to get their, uh, their orientation, because this is uh, one of those cases where when I looked up, I didn't like the way the subject was in the frame, but I found when I turned the camera 45 degrees, it just pleased me immensely, <laughs> is all I can say. I knew I had it, and I, I actually uh, took uh, a, a copy, made a copy of that picture and the one on the adjacent page, which is also the east building of the National Gallery, but it's shot through the Venetian the kind of level or blinds mm -hmm. of the west building, so you see the Venetian blinds. And I sent those two to the architect, who I greatly revere, I am Pei. And that resulted in, uh, shall we say, a personal audience with the Pope, you know? <laughs> he wrote me a note and he said, um, I'm quite intrigued with your photography and come and spend some time with me, which I did. So wonderful things happen, you know, kind of as an offshoot of, of some of these pictures. 